Hello guys and welcome to Vlogging Project. Today we've got something rather interesting called the Qbot Magic. The phone definitely looks like the Honor Magic, but instead of 600 bucks, you pay only 90 for it. Is there a catch and is it any good? Let's find out. Before we get the unboxing out of the way, let's have a look at the specs at the back. 8 curved surface screen, which is not entirely true. Actually, quad-core MTK 1.3 GHz processor, 5-inch IPS LCD, 720p screen, two cameras at the back, one is 13 megapixel, the other one is actually 5 megapixel, not two, but it might be interpolated. Front camera at 5 megapixels, two micro SIM slots and one micro SD card slot as well. 2600 mAh of battery, 3 gigs of RAM, 16 gigabytes of storage, Wi-Fi, of course, Android Nougat, and most importantly, it has band 20. So if you live in the UK, you're gonna have absolutely no problems with the 4G reception. Now let's get the unboxing out of the way guys, we've got our silicone case over here, I wasn't really a case guy myself up until I broke the screen on my Yoto phone 2 just before the review, so it's nice that they've included that in the box of such a cheap phone, I'm gonna leave that aside, that was the sleeve that the phone was packed with initially, we've got our quick start over here, and we've got the micro USB cable and the charger. And let me tell you that this is not a fast charger, but the phone doesn't need one as well because it doesn't really support quick charging. The charging takes about 3 hours and 15 minutes, so it's not very quick, but well, it is what it is. So let's have a look at the design and build quality. They definitely made it look like the Honor Magic is not a complete 100% copy, but it's close enough. So I can really appreciate the design myself, it definitely looks and feels quite alright in the hand, very nice and sturdy, it doesn't crack at all, it doesn't move if you try to bend it, simply because the glass that they've curved over here is not the screen, it's just the glass, Is check this out, it's very very thick and you can see how thick it is when you have a close look over here inside the speaker which is a debris trap by the way so every now and then you take your toothbrush and you just brush off the dust so as we are at the front we've got our front facing 5 megapixel camera we've got some sensors packed over here we've got front facing flash can you imagine and we've got a notification led which lights only in blue at the bottom we've got our navigation buttons which unfortunately are not backlit and the distance between those buttons is a little bit greater than I expected so it definitely takes a little bit of time of getting used to pressing those buttons like that because naturally you press here and you press over here, you don't stretch that much. But the phone is not too big and you can easily get used to that. Coming to the back we've got our dual camera setup which one of the cameras is a little bit fake well, not exactly, but watch till the end of the review to see what I'm talking about when I say fake. We've got a dual tone flash over here, 3.5 mm jack, micro USB charging port, and at the bottom we've got our microphone and one bottom firing mono speaker. The back cover of the phone is replaceable. So inside we've got our battery which is 2600 mAh, one second SIM card slots and micro SD card slot as well. When we look inside the phone, we can see that there's a metal frame holding everything together, which greatly improves the durability. On this side of the phone is clear and there are no buttons, and on the other side we've got our power button over here and the volume rocker, and the positioning is pretty much perfect for me, because if you have a, let's say, medium hands, your thumb directly rests on TD power button, and the volume rockers are pretty much easily reachable. So let's have a look at this screen. 720p, 5 inches, I was a little bit skeptical to be honest with you, I didn't know what to expect, but let me tell you that I was nicely surprised of the screen. There are absolutely nothing wrong with this screen at 5 inches. The screen is very vibrant, the colors are nice as well. There's a little bit of an IPS glow, I can't really show it on the camera, so the blacks are not that deep as the AMOLED screens, but for $19 I guess that's the best you can get in terms of screens, and it's very bright as well. Check this out, I, I'm using it at like 20%, you can put it all the way up like that and you're gonna have absolutely no problem seeing this screen outside on direct sunlight. Let me show you a couple of wallpapers that I've downloaded just to see what the display is all about and as you can see the colors are nice and everything is quite vibrant as well. Check this out, as well as when you go to settings, 
there is an option that I really enjoy inside the MTK phones. Usually when you go to display, you've got mirror vision, you've got total control of the screen, picture modes, basic color tuning, contrast saturation, brightness, sharpness, color temperature, dynamic contrast. You can all of these options so you can tweak the screen easily to your liking. And the second thing that I want to talk about is the software. I'm very happy to report that you're running pretty much stock Android. The only application which is additional is the wireless update. And unfortunately, you're going to need to use this application because there is only one but very annoying bug that I found when your phone is hooked up in your car over Bluetooth. At some point, the conversation is going to cut off. The phone goes to absolutely black screen and then restarts. But that's the only problem really that I've got with this phone. Apart from that, the, the software is pretty nice and stable. It's quite snappy as well. We are running Android 7.0 out of the box with security patch level of 5th of August 2017. So apart from the very few phones that got Oreo already, you're pretty much running the latest and greatest from Google. And there are just a couple of additions which are not actually gimmicks, which are actually useful. You've got gesture settings, you've got finger gesture. Check this out. Two fingers change wallpaper. That works on only on the stock launcher, unfortunately, and I've already installed Nova and you've got three finger screenshots so basically you do that and you got a screenshot which is a nice addition unfortunately as i said there is no backlight for the buttons but it is what it is the other feature that we have is breathing light it's not exactly as it is breathing light where your buttons are pulsating over here it's just the notification led and you've got further no controls over that but you can always download a third party application from the play store and control your notification LED. And the other, the other thing that I saw was dual speed. I'm not very keen on using this application to be honest with you because it says dual speed helps boost the foreground up by restricting background apps, this and that. You might have problems with your notifications. So if you want to restrict your background applications or anything like that, just use Greenify. Although the phone is running Android Nougat out of the box, you can enable this option in Nova Launcher and you're gonna have absolutely no problems. I'm talking about the double tap to sleep feature because it usually messes up your security and screen and fingerprint and all that over here no fingerprint no problems so let's see the performance quad core mtk 1.3 gigahertz processor i really didn't know what to expect but i'm very happy to report that the phone definitely feels nice and snappy check this out opening application is not a problem whatsoever of course it takes a little bit of time to load the application but once you're inside the application the phone actually is quite nice and smooth what else let's open up a couple of applications just to see what's going on here open up studio as well open up what open up clock and now when you want to go back three gigs of ram is plenty and you have absolutely no problems with the multitasking on this phone now let's have a look at the benchmark i'm not a benchmark junkie but i'm always curious to see if there are any problems with the phone so this application base mark can basically tell us what the phone is about so system we've got pretty much quite high rating simply because you're running stock android and it's very well optimized memory somewhere in the middle simply because when you're downloading and installing an application it takes quite a lot of time actually web performance is okay and graphics we've got a poor score over here and uh, let me tell you that there's a pretty good reason for that which brings us to the next section the gaming performance now <laughs> i always use epic citadel even before i install any games just to see what to expect and let me tell you that i'm not overly happy with the results that i got from epic citadel check this out 720p resolution 26.6 fps and i already knew from this application that we're gonna have problems with the gaming and unfortunately that's the case heavy games hmm let's see let's have a look at the new carmageddon it's not the most optimized application in the world but check this out I mean, you see what we are talking about.
Yeah. So basically heavy games are pretty much unplayable. And let's see what happens if you play a little bit of a lighter game like the Hot Wheels. And as you can see it's running a decent FPS. It's not perfect of course, but it's pretty much alright. Let's check this jump, I really love this jump. Check this out. Yeah. So basically gaming, if you play heavy games, just forget about it. Some lightweight games are going to run just acceptable, but in no way this is a gaming phone. So what about the sound? Bottom firing, mono speaker, and let me tell you that the speaker is not very good. I mean, it's barely loud enough and the quality is just not there. But it kind of gets the job done. Check this out. If you cup it a little bit with your hand like that, it's gonna be just enough into loud environments. So the speaker, well, you can't really expect much for this price point. I'm happy to report that you've got some sound enhancement options over here into sound settings. The first one is best audio enhancement. And uh, I keep this one off because when we talk about headphone jack output, the sound is pretty much average, the loudness is not very good, but at least you've got some bass. If you switch this one off, the bass goes away and the thing is that you've got some, uh, you know, movie mode, music mode, they're not good. Believe me, they're not good. So keep this one off, but the other one, best loudness, you need it on, on, because if it's not on, you can't really hear anything from the bottom firing speaker. So that's the configuration that I recommend. What about the battery life? 2600 mAh of battery powering this 5 inch 720p screen and we've got a quad core processor so basically I was a little bit skeptical about the battery life as well but I'm happy to report that the battery life is actually not bad check my screenshots out 3 hours 17 minutes 6% left 2 hours 55 minutes 8% left 4 hours 10 minutes 5% left 4 hours 25 minutes, 4% left. So basically you can easily get 4 hours of screen on time on this phone. If you really push it much, you're gonna get just about 3 hours. And if you use it on Wi-Fi, you might get something like 4.5 or even probably 5 hours of screen on time. So 3 to 5 hours of screen on time, that's, that's okay to my book. Especially for this price, I'm okay with the battery life. And the cameras. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. So when we talk about the camera, I said in the beginning that the second camera is a little bit fake and in a way it is. Let me conduct the test like that. We're gonna put a small piece of paper to cover the second camera, which actually is the first camera in our case over here. So as you can see, the second camera is taped now. So let's do our testing. That's our model over here. Double pressing the power button launches the camera well, relatively quickly. And we are on photo mode. We've got no problems taking photo, video, beauty, bokeh mode. That's where the second camera was supposed to be used. But check this out. You've got no problems taking bokeh photos with the main camera. As well as you can control the amount of bokeh. But as you can see, it just blurs the sides a little bit. And on the right, it doesn't blur anything. So you've got no problems taking bokeh photos only with your main camera. Now, when we go down to, that's a little bit annoying by the way. Oh, bloody hell. When you finally go to mono, again, you're taking photos with your main camera as well. This one is still taped. So the question here is, what does the second camera actually do? And let me tell you that the only application we've got for the second camera is as a backup of the main camera. Let me show you what I'm talking about. The only time when you're gonna have the second camera activated is you go to bokeh mode. Now, what you gotta do is cover the second camera with your finger and let's check this out. Main camera has been covered. Change to deputy camera to take picture. And now, as you can see, our main camera is covered by my finger 
but this allows you the second camera to be activated and used for photos so basically you can use it for mono which is okay let's take one more photo and the strange thing is that you can use it for video but the video is color as well that's that's a little bit strange but basically that's the only application of the second camera basically if your main camera is covered for whatever reason you can use the second camera which has a terrible quality by the way so yeah it's there and it's doing something but it's kind of fake if you know what i mean but the front camera is pretty bad as well 5 megapixels front facing flash this photo is taken with the flash and as you can see there's absolutely no details whatsoever in my beard and it just looks bad but what's interesting in that is that check this out are you ready Ta-da! I mean, there are quite a lot of beauty options and check this out. Of course, there's definitely not for me, but if you like, you can put lipstick, you can change your iris color, you can make your eyebrows. I mean, if you're a kid, then you probably enjoy that. But overall, the quality is crap anyway. So now moving to daytime, that's a comparison between the normal cam and the picture actually looks quite all right. Now we've got the monochrome photo, which I'm not really a fan of, so I don't really care. And that's the same photo with the second sensor. And I mean, you shouldn't use the second camera anyway. So now when we move back to daytime, the photo looks quite all right, actually. And it's okay to my book. This is testing the bouquet mode. As you can see, I've blurred the background a little bit over here and it's pretty bad, I would say. That's another photo that I've tested. Dynamic range, you have totally no dynamic range whatsoever with this camera and everything is a little bit bluish. Now, the reason I snapped this photo is to show you that you can actually change the sharpness settings inside the camera application. So let's check this out. This photo was taken with the softer settings of the sharpness. And as you can see, the sharpness is way too much. Now that's with the medium settings. Check this out. It's starting to get ridiculous. And now on the sharpest setting, check this out. That's absolutely ridiculous. Now that's a selfie that I took in daylight. Absolutely no dynamic range whatsoever. The quality is eh. And that's my new benchmark for low light capabilities of the cameras. That's my shelf in my corridor, guys. That's basically unacceptable. You've got no details and a lot of sharpness whatsoever. Now with the flash, we've got pathetic results as well. Check this out. Absolutely no details whatsoever. And that's a nighttime photo. I mean, it's... it's I, I, I just not going to say anything. Now, when it comes down to video, we've got no MP4 format options. All we've got is 3GP, which is unfortunate because the quality is just not there. But at least I'm happy to report that we've got stabilization, actually, which is magical. <laughs> Hello, guys, and welcome to Vlogging Project. Today, we're going to have a look at the video camera of the Cubot Magic. And... <laughs> As I know how bad the main camera is, I really don't expect miracles from the video camera, but we shall see, I guess. Let's check the sky a little bit. Let's check the surroundings. I'm just gonna shake it up a little bit like that, a little bit like that, and just come back. I'm really curious to see how the stabilization works, but let's see. So yeah, as you saw, the quality is just not there, but at least you've got stabilization. I really don't know why so many manufacturers fail to implement any kind of image stabilization, like the Le Echo phones and like the Sharp A1, which is going to be in my next review. So stay tuned for that. So what does that leave us with the Cubot Magic, guys? To be honest with you, I'm pleasantly surprised because at 90 bucks for a brand new phone, I expected to suck big time and the only two areas that the phone actually sucks is the gaming performance and the camera as well which is pretty much unusable but apart from that you're getting a pretty good screen with very good sunlight visibility the performance is quite all right as well the sound is well pretty much in the middle the battery life is quite good as well three to five hours of screen on time and don't forget that you have all the 4g frequencies which are so important for europe you're getting a dual sim slot as well as a micro sd sim card slot so basically for 90 bucks i think you're getting a pretty good bargain depending on what you need of course so if you're interested in buying this phone 
check the link in the description down below i'm gonna give you the best price available and uh yeah why not hit the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel as well and see you in the next one adios